So I want to build a little picket fence along the front side yard, side of the front yard. Um, because right now it's just empty. It's just an empty lot. Now I'd like to stay that way, that'd be great, but it also means that people and dogs like to walk across this nice big garden bed I have here. But hopefully a three foot high fence will be like, oh, I shouldn't walk that way. And it's not gonna be anything like super fancy. You know, I did get cedar boards for it just to match this, but my posts are gonna be pressure treated two by fours and just regular two by threes for the horizontal pieces. So we're gonna mark out for that and then put those in the ground and probably attach the two by threes. Let's get started. So this tree is all on the property line and instead of like doing anything weird with it we just kind of made a corner around it with the six foot fence and it worked it worked fine um we got a mostly shady area here i've got a hosta i would like to fill it with more plants and potentially do some kind of like whimsical fairy garden thing because i think that would be cute a little secret garden kind of deal uh, that's in the future. Something I'm still letting percolate, right? But the tree. Since the tree is in the middle of the property line, I do have like a garden edging here out of stone. And I tried to be a little generous with it about like where I think the property line is based on the markers that I could find. And I don't know how surveyors do it when there's a tree in the way, but I guessed. Now what I don't want to do is make the tree part of the fence because trees are growing. They're growing living things and so that would eventually ruin the fence. The first post is going to be like two feet away from this tree, but I think I'm going to try to have the horizontal boards overhang a little bit so that there's no big huge gap, which means that this is gonna be really tricky because there's a giant root here too. I'm not sure how well this is gonna work. Let's find out. So this is my line here from tree to road. I've got Arborvitae right here and then my rock border here. So I'm gonna try to put the pickets somewhere in the middle so that I don't have to move anything. But this here, this big old root is the challenge because it's closer to the rock so maybe it won't be that big of a deal. I'm gonna try to dig a hole here and see what happens and see if I can dig deep enough. Now luckily this fence can only be three foot high. And I have cut my 2x4s into 4 foot long pieces. I would like to bury them about 1.5 feet deep. If I can. Ideally. So uh, this will be... This one and the, the last one, because there's another tree over there, are going to be the biggest challenge. I think I'll start with this one hole and then measure out from here to the last hole, dig that one out just to make sure they work, and then put a string line between so that I know my other, I think there's going to be four posts total. That way I know they're all even and in a line. Let's find 
it foot. About here is where the next one will be. So I'll use this as a little marker. So that tells me that my last board should end here with the post here. And I'm wondering if I should go back on what I said and just use this tree as the end of the fence. Okay, I think if I make this last section the same width post to post as that first section is. I think that would look good. It would be equal, even. So let me measure for that and then see where the post would be. Right there. Which I think is close enough to the tree that it would still deter humans and anything but the smallest dogs. And I could still have it overhang just like it's doing now, so. Good plan, okay. That's where my hole's gonna be for this post. Let's make sure it's straight and then have at it. All right, so the string line. We've got it between the two end posts and that, with the math, will tell me where the other two posts need to be. 77 inches away from here and from the other end. I think this is where we're going to leave off for today. So I've got a little bit of an overhang over there. Overhang over here. But not actually using the trees. Well, there you have it. Little tiny picket bits. See how I alternated between wide and skinny boards? I think that adds a little bit of visual interest. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. And it was pretty simple and easy to put together. The hardest thing to do for this was dig those two middle holes because of all the clay. Like, that was unexpected. Um, fully, fully expected the other two holes to be much more difficult because of all the roots, but yeah. Weird things happen. Uh, so now I'm gonna try to stain it and see how well that goes but have to do it because those, the horizontal boards are not exterior. It's a little sneak peek of the stain that I've chosen. Look at that. Here's the difference. It is the uh, Thompson's water seal in chestnut brown. Uh, this one's the transparent one, and I really like the way it looks on the cedar. I'm not so sure about the untreated uh, horizontal pieces. I don't know. I think it'll all even out. I can't do anything to the treated posts just now. You gotta let those dry out for 30 days, but so far so good. Now I'm just waiting for everything to dry up because it's been raining basically since the day after I got that done. So once it is finally dry and will stay dry, I'll finish the staining on that little fence and this whole thing all the way around. The privacy fence will get the same stain but uh, probably a different solidity just kind of depends on how well we can clean it off because it's it's pretty gray um 
So as long as the pressure washer doesn't cause any drama, we'll do transparent because I like the way it looks. And this fence isn't that old. We, we did it like three years ago. So I don't think that warrants a full solid stain. Um, I feel like that's more of a last resort thing when your fence is old and grungy and this one's not, it's just dirty. But that will be another video. I'll see you then. Thank you for watching.